Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Call, a Korean thriller horror hybrid from 2020 that is based on the British Puerto Rican co-production The Caller from 2011. Now this review is actually going to have two parts, uh, all in one video, but there's going to be a second part to this video. In the first part, I'm going to discuss the film without even telling you the plot because I feel like that's the best way to go into it. In part two of this video, which will be like the second half, I will briefly discuss the plot and a few other non-spoiler details. So no part of this video will have spoilers, but again, I think the first half, if you're convinced by the first half of this video, just turn it off and go watch the film. If you're not and you need a little bit more info, keep watching and I'll talk a little bit more about it with you. So the call centers around the interaction between two characters, one played by Shin Hee Park, recently seen in Alive, and Jung So Jun, recently seen in Burning. Now, I've been a fan of Park for ages, ever since I watched the K-drama You Are Beautiful way back in 2009. It's nice to see her get some roles recently that have higher exposure in the West, or to Western viewers. And uh, I hope that some people go back and watch some of her other stuff if they become a fan of her. Jung So Jun is an up-and-coming star. You know, she's only been in a few projects, but has already made a big impression with audiences and critics. So both of these ladies give really good performances in The Call, which is a film that actually demands good acting. The entire story rests on their shoulders and they carry it. This is the first feature-length film by director Chung Hyun Lee, and after watching The Call, I am definitely interested in seeing what this director does next. This is a proficiently made, high-quality project that infuses enough craftsmanship to keep the viewer glued to the screen throughout the entire runtime. I mean, after the brief setup, this is basically like non-stop suspense. And a significant reason for that is the direction, which is really impressive. There are, in, there are a few moments that even get a bit scary at times, which is why I consider it to be like a thriller-horror hybrid. If you want a good quality thriller horror hybrid that has a lot of suspense and some interesting plot turns, I suggest that you check out The Call. It's currently on Netflix. In fact, don't even read the short synopsis tagline on the Netflix website because I think it gives too much information. Uh, I won't get into details, but I just that's my opinion on that. So that concludes part one of this video. If you're not convinced yet, you know, keep watching. Again, no spoilers here, but I will now briefly discuss the actual plot of the film, if that's something you really need to know before going into it. There are no spoilers, remember. About 15 to 20 minutes into the film, you realize that the call is treading on the same territory as films like Ditto or Frequency, because we have one girl in the present day, played by Shin Hee Park, who receives a telephone call from a girl in the past, played by Jung So Jung. So both of these characters have their own problems, but they begin to help one another by using their positions in time to their advantage. Unfortunately, things do not go as planned, and I'll leave it at that for the plot synopsis. Now from everything I've said so far, one other thing I want to point out in terms of big positives is that the film is benefited from the adapted screenplay. Like the premise of the call, as I said, has been done before, but the writing condenses the typical storyline of a full two-hour movie, like Frequency, into the first 40 minutes. So, you know, uh, 40 minutes into the film, they basically already covered a full feature-length film's worth of content. So at that point, I'm like, where is this film going from, from here? You know, it feels like the story is over 40 minutes into the film. This thing's finished already, but we still have over an hour left. And I loved that aspect to the writing because it felt kind of refreshing and different. Like, this film totally carves out its own identity. You know what I mean? So it doesn't just tread on what's been done before. It really, it basically finishes that part of like the 40-minute mark, and then it does its own thing after that, which is pretty cool. Uh, very refreshing to watch. All the events that occur throughout the entire second half feel naturally integrated, and I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. In terms of possible <clears throat> criticisms, uh, this kind of premise does require a suspension of disbelief, right? Because if you think about it, 
you know, uh, this type of thing would never happen in real life, being able to talk to somebody from the past. But you just kind of kind of you go with that. Also, I would say that there was some crazy stuff that happened in this town <laughs> within a fairly short period of time. And these events just so happened to kind of occur within the same time frame uh, that one of these characters was living in. And I won't get into any more details, even though they were not caused by the main conflict of the film. So it was almost like, uh, I don't know, I just felt like a few times I'm like, wow, that was kind of maybe a little convenient that that crazy event happened that one of the characters could utilize to, you know, do certain things. But, you know, it's it's all right. You just got to kind of roll with it a little bit. A few con little contrivances here and there, but nothing, certainly not enough to be a big problem. But they are there. Also, some viewers may have a problem with the very ending because one of the characters probably could have prevented what happened if they were really on their game. But, again, you know, I did not think it was a big enough problem. And I actually... I'm actually glad it ended the way it did, <laughs> in my opinion. I really like the ending of the film. I was about to be disappointed, but I wasn't. So that's good. I'm happy they did it. Let's just put it that way. So I don't want to say anything more about this. I strongly recommend The Call to anyone who likes Korean thrillers or even horror films. Again, it's currently available on Netflix in the United States and a lot of other countries I've heard. And as always, I'll see you next time.